if you're learning Torah properly, you have to learn all parts of the Torah in order to serve the Creator at the ultimate level. I spoke to one of my students uh, a few days ago. We talked about a study program. People ask all the time what they should study. It's not rocket science, Rabotai. You have to study everything. But if you want some type of structure, this is what you're supposed to do. First and foremost, it's Alakha and Shulchan Aruch to learn the weekly parasha with commentary. You have to learn the weekly parasha with commentary. Realistically, you have to read it three times. Twice you should read the parasha, and the third time with commentary. Which means that every day, you're going to spend a little bit of time learning the parasha. Commentary means learning it with the commentary by Rashi. Originally it was on kilos, but the Chachamim said that Rashi is fine as well, especially since most people don't know how to read on kilos and don't understand it. So read the parasha with commentary. That already gives you at least 15 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes a day worth of learning. In addition to that, you have to learn halacha. You have to learn how to be a Jew. You have to learn what to do. What you should start with is Alachot Shabbat. And the reason why is because Alachot Shabbat is the difference between life and death. Even though you should learn the Alachot of blessings, that's the first Gemara, is uh, Masechet Brachot. If you forget a blessing or you make a mistake in a blessing, it's not a death penalty. But if you make a mistake on Shabbat, it's a death penalty. So first thing you need to know, you need to learn Alachot Shabbat. Every day, you learn a couple of Alachot, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever it is, spend 15 minutes a day learning Alachot. In 15 minutes, you read, let's say, for example, if you're Sephardic, Yalkut, uh, Yalkut Yosef in English or in Hebrew. I'm sure they have uh, many, many more options, even if you're Ashkenazi. Available on Art School, Feldheim, and other places. Many of the Chachamim wrote a very simple way of learning Alakha. If you're going to only spend 15 to 30 minutes learning Alakha, don't learn it from the Shulchan Aruch. Why? Because Shulchan Aruch requires you to delve into things to understand them much deeper. Don't learn, don't think that you can learn Alakha from the Gemara. Gemara is not to learn Alakha, Gemara is to learn how to think. The Alakha you learn from. The Puskim. But you have to learn in the beginning stages, if you're Baal Tshuva, convert, you have to learn it, bottom line, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. That's what you need to learn just to get through the day. So you spend 15 to 30 minutes a day learning Alakha. So now you have weekly parasha and Alakha. The third thing is that you must learn is you must learn Musal. You must learn at least 15 to 30 minutes a day of Musar. What's Musar? Our lectures. You learn our lectures, that's your Musar. Why? Because every shiur is at least one or two of you that get it on the head. Reminds you that you're supposed to do tshuva. Reminds me that I'm supposed to do tshuva. That's what Musar is. Musar is reminding us that we're still trying to refine ourselves in order to become diamond. It's not uh, judging anyone. We're not a judge. We're not a jury. What Musar is, is reminding us that we're all trying to become the diamonds that Hashem wants us to be. And in order to become a diamond, you must go under pressure. You must be cut a few times. It hurts to become a diamond. But it's worth it in the end. Become priceless. So, the only way to do that is by learning Musar. There's countless Musar books out there if you want to read from a book. Whether it's Path of the Just or it's a Netive uh, Or, or um, Or Israel, or Chovot uh, Levavot. There's countless other ones out there that you can learn, Musar books. At least 15 to 30 minutes a day. If you are at a point where you've done, you're doing all three of those already for a while. You're learning the weekly parasha on a regular basis. You're learning halacha on a regular basis. You're learning Musar on a regular basis for an extended period of time. Then it's time for you as a man to add Gemara. 
You have to add Gemara again, at least another half hour a day, if not more. Of course, everything should be as much as possible. But you see, just to learn the basics, the basics, you can't get away with less than an hour a day of Torah. You can't get away. Even if you're going to the minimum of minimum, these four things require no less than an hour. In reality, it should be an hour of each one. But the minimum of minimum requires you to, to study at least an hour a day. So for all of those people who say, when I tell them, listen, you have to learn Torah, it's like, oh, can I just learn for, for like 10 minutes? Hear like a video clip, they send me a WhatsApp and I'm fine. Yeah, you're fine if it's your first day, your first week, your first month, even your first six months of realizing that you're a Jew. After that, it's not enough. Why? Because you're not going to learn enough on that one video clip. So it's important to know that these are four things. A woman should focus on the laws of modesty, the laws of tarat mishpacha, the laws of Shabbat, the laws of child rearing, how to raise children. Those are the main things that a woman should focus on instead of the Gemara. But the key is, Rabotai, is that all of these teachings, if you take them and you're disciplined and you take them seriously, you're going to realize that each time you learn a little bit more, you're coming closer and closer to Hashem. You're coming closer and closer to really loving Him and not just saying you love Him to people. And for all of those people who say they love Hashem, first of all, you should know you're full of it. Because if you love the Hashem, you will be at a completely different level. You would have no struggles within regards to any of the mitzvot. Because like we said, loving, loving someone means that you're doing something just because. Just because. Not because uh, of any other reason. So if you're struggling with a certain mitzvah, whether you can't get away from a certain hobby that's not allowed, or you can't get away from a certain woman that's not allowed, or a certain other sin that's not allowed, and you're having a struggle, that means you don't love Hashem. That means you love yourself and you're struggling with a certain issue. But that doesn't make you bad. It makes It's okay. It's normal. But don't start screaming at the people, no, no, I love Hashem, I love Hashem. First, you have to learn what it means to love. And the key is, is that Hashem put us in this world in order to reach the level of loving Him. Because if we get to a level of loving Him, not only does He give us the special protection that we talked about, not only does He give us the special blessings that we talked about, but also all of the sins we've ever made in our life turn into mitzvot. It's the ultimate reward in this world. The ultimate reward in this world is where Hashem takes all of the sins you've ever made in your life and turns them into mitzvot. Meaning it's, 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 it's definitely a worthwhile endeavor to try to get there. But you're not going to get there overnight. First, you have to fear Hashem. Serve Him purely out of fear. Then, respect. Honor the awe, the majesty of Hashem. Get to the highest level. And ultimately, you get to love. Realistically, anyone that ever gets there usually has certain things they're purely afraid of, certain things they love, but it's always a balance. There's never just one or the other. But the key is, Rabotai, is that Hashem gave us this mission because we could achieve it. Every single one of us could achieve it. But it's only if we get out of our own way. We, are, we have to start getting out of our own way. We have to stop telling ourselves this horrible mantra, I can't do it. This is too hard. This is too this. This is too that. And do it. Just do it. Failed? Do it again. Failed, do it again. And keep doing it. Stop saying, oh, maybe I should do this. Or maybe I should do that. Maybe I should go here. Maybe I should go, maybe nothing. Get the word maybe out of your vocabulary. Either do it or be quiet. But you have to move forward. Why? Because we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. 